every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Warning of pain and inflation ahead for Trinidad and Tobago. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday, 3rd January 2022. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get the grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. Trinidad and Tobago is put on notice. Expect some pain in 2022. This warning comes from former minister in the Ministry of Finance, Mariano Brown. Mr. Brown is also predicting higher prices at the pump, while one University of the West Indies economist and another former planning minister tell of inflation woes and the need for a focus on agriculture. TV6's Nicole M. Romani has more. Mr. Brown predicts increased petrol prices in 2022. He says this will cause the government to subsidize, although he notes that the state can no longer afford it. And we're going to have to go through some pain in the short run. Now, nobody wants to hear that, but that's what you have to put on the table. You cannot adjust, you cannot affect that pain because you're importing it. And until you have no barrier, have no defense, you're depending upon petrol, you trade to move anything around the country. Right? So there's going to be, and the price of petrol is going to go up. If the price is strong, then by definition, it must change at the pump. Alternative government has to give a subsidy. And government can no longer afford to give those subsidies. He says COVID-19 has affected the globe and we are stepping into an inflationary spike where he believes more than just petrol prices will rise. It's correct to point out that the positive side will come from the energy sector. I think gas not all so much. Um, <clears throat> but at the same token, that's, that's also what's frightening in that the, the output from natural gas is, at a, is, at, is, is low, very low, com, com, compared to where we were before. And we're looking at probably secular decline. So I think, I, think that's a, I think that's a key point. So the point about what are the other things we're going to do, I think the economy has grown to such a low point um, that anything that you get right now will be a rebound. But, on the, but in terms of the other outlook, um, COVID-19 is having an effect on the world. So we're going to be walk, walking into an inflationary spiral around the world. The, the signals are pretty clear. That's where we'll see when prices have gone up, um, the flower prices have gone up, and then you could pretty well expect that more or less the price of everything is going to go up. And economist Dr. Roger Hussain also has some concerns about inflation. What concerns me about inflation is the fact that inflation is taking place in an environment where nominal income is falling. And Dr. Tiwari mentioned the, the 25% fall in nominal GDP per capita. Um, and in that setting, if it is, in other countries, in nominal income is actually rising. But we have had these situations in the context of a depression when nominal income actually fall for the last six years. Meantime, former Minister of Planning and the Economy, Dr. Botiwari, is suggesting greater focus on agriculture and self-sustainability. Common sense would tell us that if we can produce more of what we consume as food, and we could link it to agriculture, as uh, Roger mentioned, because there are a number of agro-industries that are doing quite well and exporting. 
um, and serving the local and regional community as well. And if we could create surpluses. He says, if this can be done in the long run, it will affect the food import bill, local production, jobs in agriculture, and contribute to gross domestic product or GDP. Dr. Tiwari says it seems that the population appears to no longer have confidence that the government or the opposition can offer real solutions to the challenges faced by the country. And this troubles him. Nicole M. Romney, TV6 News. In other news, UWI Five Islands Campus in Antigua to partner with Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Ursul Charles of ABS News reports. In October this year, Harvard Business School became a major partner of the University of the West Indies, Five Islands Campus, testament to the prestige of the regional institution. The university's executive has not been resting on its laurels, though, as it is in the course of finalizing yet another partnership with an impressive international university. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, is on UE's radar. And so says Director of Academic Affairs at Five Islands, Dr. Curtis Charles. I have a meeting in... Um, early February, going to be talking to my alma mater, MIT, about developing some relationship with the new School of Science, Computing and Artificial Intelligence, um, as well as the Sloan Business School and our business school. Um, we, early in those conversations, we have had one, two conversations so far, and we're going to have a follow-up one coming in, in um coming in February. According to the QS World University rankings for 2021, MIT is the number one ranked university worldwide, higher than Oxford, higher than Stanford, Cambridge, and Harvard. Dr. Charles says this is another step towards ensuring current and graduating students have options to gain knowledge and skills they can better leverage after graduation. So that's how we build capacity. That's how we give our students multiple path towards degree completion. Our students could still go to graduate schools anywhere in the region, but we also want to give them the opportunities to expand their horizon and basically learn more and learn a diversity of possibilities and diversity of, of, of subjects and diversity of learning styles as well. And as information technology continues to be part of the current thrust of the university, yet another degree will be added to the program offerings within the next academic year. We have a, a relationship with business right now that a program that we expect to offer in the fall, which is very exciting, it is School of Business and Suskai, which is a BS in data science, economics, and computer science. It's not a three degree. It's an interdisciplinary degree, and that is something that we're excited about because we're talking about developing a new type of, of graduate to be competitive within the region. Previous News, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. General Secretary of the Barbados Labour Party, Dr. Jerome Walcott, has dismissed rumours that the island's oldest political party is having an internal leadership squabble. More in this news item from Barbados Today. Speaking at the National Housing Corporation, where all 30 candidates paid their deposits to contest the election, Dr. Walcott said the party is united behind its leader, Mia Motley. On Monday evening, the Prime Minister spoke to Barbados and she gave the background to her thoughts and her thinking on why she had decided that it was time to have a general elections in Barbados. Since then, there have been a number of comments. We have heard that there, it, is, it is described by the opposition as being a panic because of COVID. It's been described as because we are disunited. And indeed, we've heard the leader of the opposition describe it as reckless. First of all, in terms of the the, the parody about us not being united. Clearly, you can see that for yourself, that we are totally united. And we are not disputing at this stage. And we are united behind one leader. We are not deciding who is to be president and who is to be political leader. We are clear. So I discard that. Dr. Walcott also rubbished claims by the opposition leader, Bishop Joseph Averly, that it was a reckless move on the part of the government to stage a general election in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since March 2020, the world has been faced with a pandemic. There have been four phases. The initial phase, there's been Alpha, there's been Delta, and now there's Omicron, the fourth phase. This has happened globally. 
In this time, there have been elections held throughout the world, in the great United States of America, in the United Kingdom, in Canada. And in this region, we've had elections in Suriname, in St. Kitts, in St. Lucia, in Trinidad, in Jamaica, in the Bahamas. And indeed, here in Barbados, we had a by-election last, last October. And all of these parties participated. And there was no talk about recklessness. They were out in their numbers. One year later, things are different. Then we had no vaccine. Now, we have varieties of vaccines available. More than 65% of our population has been vaccinated. Has been vaccinated. So obviously conditions have changed. St. Lucia's Ministry of Health is repeating appeals for St. Lucians to avoid large gatherings and to adhere to COVID-19 protection measures. Don Nicholas of DBS News World reports. As of December 26, 2021, according to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon belmont George, St. Lucia diagnosed a total of well over 13,000 cases in country, with over 200 active cases. Increases in active cases have signaled the start of the fifth wave, with the country at high risk of introduction of the Omicron variant. The chief medical officer pointed out that December is the highest risk month for COVID-19 transmission. While the ministry understands the COVID-19 fatigue experienced by the population at this time and the nature of the festive season, Dr. Belma George highlighted the importance of reducing the level of social activities and compliance to COVID-19 protocols. It is imperative at this point that we reduce the level of social activities and ensure compliance to all of the public health measures. Health and safety must be our priority. She indicated that the booster Pfizer vaccine is also available for persons who have had both doses of the AstraZeneca for over six months. She also pointed out the need to avoid large crowds and ensure that protocols at the workplace are being observed. We remind you of the following important measures. Avoid large crowds and crowded areas. Ensure that protocols are maintained at workplaces, on minibuses, and commercial and tourism sector. Use face masks when in public places. Ensure you remain in quarantine or isolation if you are a direct contact of a case. If you develop respiratory symptoms, seek medical care and avoid contact with others. The ministry reiterated its call to everyone who has not been vaccinated to do so as soon as possible. For the DBS News World, I'm Don Nicholas. Police in Bermuda say internet fraudsters have swindled Bermudan residents out of almost US $4 million in 2021. The police said that entire life savings have been lost in some cases and authorities had managed to recover only $40,600 US dollars of the halt. Detective Chief Inspector Sherwin Joseph of the Bermuda Police Services Special Investigation Unit said the cost of computer crime added up to more than 3.8 million US dollars for the year. Email hustlers accounted for 56% of cases. Social media scams made up 22% and a sting of other tactics were employed for the other 22%. Joseph highlighted remote access fraud, where people are targeted with phone calls, claimed to be from reputable telecommunications or computer firms from abroad or on the island. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets.
I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.